Yeah, let us speak about Gnostic traditions um, and, uh, well, uh, now we have uh, so many Christian churches uh, in the West and the East, uh, Roman Catholic Church, Protestant Church, Anglican Church, Baptist Church, and Orthodox Church. And uh, uh, even that is not complete list because also Armenian Church, Coptic Church, etc. And the church tradition, I think it's very um, important and um, wonderful thing because, you know, we may sometimes criticize church, different churches because of corruption, because of involvement into political and financial kind of things. But at the same time, let us imagine that no church, no church, it's also bad because we have a even Christian Bible only because we have a church. Just imagine, no church means we don't have even chance to come across with message uh, about Jesus. You know, we, we don't remember that who uh, who are the people who uh, brought us uh, the message uh, of Jesus and his, I mean, life, biography and gospels, church. I mean, for centuries they preserved this um, information and a lot of wonderful, you know, art and buildings uh, and monasteries that's also a very important part of our culture, church music, church painting, wall painting, and, you know, that's, that's also important part of our culture and uh, I mean there are many good things about church, but if we wish to speak about mystical tradition, self-inquiry, inner meditation um, kind of things uh, in a Christian tradition, then church is not really nice because, okay, church may do something good and uh, useful and something which is, okay, slightly in a sense against um, inner spiritual freedom because, you know, to be spiritual you must be free. To be spiritual, you must meditate, and, and if you meditate, you, not, you don't need priests, that's the point. If you are a meditation practitioner, you may need guru, you may need teachers, I mean number of teachers, but you don't need church as institution, social institution, that's the point. That... Um, an agnostic tradition, normally we attribute all that to the, you know, first three, four, five centuries of Christian time. Um, and uh, in that first three, four, five centuries, okay, different kinds of groups existed in, in Greece, in Jerusalem, in Egypt, in Rome, um, in what we call now South France. And some of them were Gnostic groups, and uh, later on, like 4th, 5th century, fathers of the church, they didn't need it, <laughs> all that Gnostic groups, and they, they destroyed it, actually. But um, when we uh, speak about Gnostic tradition in Christianity, we don't need uh, to, go, <laughs> to go to the 1st and 2nd century only. Actually, we have Gnostic tradition in the modern world as well. And, um, okay, who are Gnostic uh, people right now? For example, Yogananda Paramahamsa, the great Kriya Yoga guru and mystic who lived in the first century, first part, I'm sorry, first part of 20th century. And he's a wonderful commentary to the New Testament, better to say to the gospel. Um, yeah, um, that's example of the Gnostic tradition. What does mean Gnostic? It means we practice meditation, we respect church, but keep distance from that, and we just read New Testament. We just read, generally speaking, Bible, meditate, and with the help of mystical experiences then something happened. Maybe it's, um, you know, channeling with Jesus, but direct, not with the help of priests. 
maybe it's our inner mystical divine experience of the Christ consciousness, you know. But that what is Gnostic tradition about. And Yogananda is a wonderful example. And his main disciple, Swami Kriyananda, I mean, we have uh, maybe two or three Kriyanandas, and one of the most famous American Kriyananda, who is the founder of Ananda, tradition Ananda Kriya Yoga. He also published brilliant, wonderful commentaries to the um, both Bhagavad Gita and the New Testament, and that's also example of Gnostic Christianity, uh, which is based on the Kriya Yoga meditation. And okay, one more example of Gnostic literature, which is okay, contemporary, modern kind of books, is Leo Tolstoy, great Russian, like genius of Russian literature. And we know, like, um, War and Peace and Anna Karenina, all that novels, but actually Tolstoy was, uh, by the way, a member of Theosophical Society and a member of uh, Freemasonry, and he was not really mystic in a sense, okay, Yogananda, but he was philosopher, an agnostic philosopher, and his great book, I just don't have it, uh, here, uh, um, in what I believe, I, I think that the, the title of the book is in what I believe or uh, what is my belief, something like that. Leo Tolstoy. It's a huge, you know, um, uh, actually commentaries and speculations and, uh, you know, meditations on the message of Jesus, not life, but message. And you, and when you read that uh, Leo to, by Leo Tolstoy, this, this in what I believe, this kind of book, short book actually, yeah, then, uh, you know, for me it was a kind of shock because I immediately understood that to be Christian really it's nearly almost impossible, because it's very to be a member of the church, but to be real Christian. According to the standards which we um, have um, actually in the New Testament and what Leo Tolstoy wrote about, it's wow, yeah, you know, it's um, okay. We have um, a number of lectures, actually, huge number of lectures by Satya Sai Baba about Jesus the Christ. Uh, for, let me see, uh, since 60s, uh, it's like for 50 years, Satya Sai Baba, every year, uh, you know, December 24th and 25th, for 50 years, like, in the end of December, um, he was giving like two or three lectures about Jesus' life, Jesus' philosophy. I just go and take all that lectures, they are openly available as a huge message of Gnostic Christianity because it's about self inquiry, meditation, it's not about okay, social kind of Christianity. And um, uh, actually, I'm not sure that I know the um. Uh, title of this book it's written by a great Russian uh, saint who lived in um, very beginning of 19th century and his name is Seraphim of Sarov and um, yeah, better to say it's not his um, book it's uh, you know like his instruction to his disciple whose name was uh, Mr. Motovilov, and um, it's a, uh, the title goes like approximately The Purpose of Christian Life, okay, like by Seraphim of Sarov. It's about um, Holy Spirit and um, all that uh, Orthodox Christian starts it tradition, uh, Orthodox Christian mystical um, uh, tradition. And it's interesting that 
um, if we'll say a few words about Orthodox Christianity, it's very much uh, Gnostic because, okay, if you go to the church, any Orthodox church, it's just, okay, social institution. Unfortunately, too much involved in uh, political games and, by the way, much more involved than uh, than, than Protestant and Baptist churches. Uh, but uh, the saints, uh, I mean, so-called stars, they're very far from the church tradition. It's like tricky question because, um, uh, you know, all the stars, all the saints and the mystics of the Orthodox Church, actually they spent life and years somewhere outside of monastery in the forest, pray and meditate, really outside of the church. Then, then die. And then the first thing watch church is doing is like make them as saints. And then say, proclaim, okay, this, for example, Seraphim of Sarov, he was one of us. But really he was not because he spent, you know, all his life actually outside of the church in the forest, praying and meditating. Uh, actually, Seraphim of Sarov and other starters they were not against church, let us be clear, but they were not a part of church in a normal way. So it means we have a lot of examples, and I believe that Freemasonry also example of um, Gnostic tradition in a very subtle way, because Freemasonry also, it's um, basically Christian Gnostic uh, tradition, and uh, of course, let us not discuss all the rumors and uh, misunderstandings about Freemasonry, but basically it's a okay Christian mystical tradition with a huge morality and ethic and mystical stuff as well, which is purely uh, Christian. And uh, of course, there are many uh, rituals, uh, rituals and philosophical things which are about okay uh, ancient e egyptians okay but anyway jerusalem temple is the mm, foundation of the freemasonry in all that um, um you know uh, anyway christian uh, mystical uh, approaches are there so we have um, plenty of choices how can we um, find this uh, Gnostic tradition, it means starting with the Freemasonry in the West, then uh, Orthodox Christian starts, then Leo Tolstoy, and then, mm, okay, all that Kriya Yoga and a meditation tradition, especially Kriya Yoga, you know, because Yogananda Paramahamsa and Swami Kriyananda, they really did a lot to bring this uh, spirit of uh, Gnostic tradition back to to life so like that that what I may say about uh, a Gnostic tradition which we have right now